Hello everyone and welcome back to season two of Let's Process That podcast. I'm Emily Christopher. I'm Nick Honorkamp. And we are so glad that you have joined us. Um, wow, it has been almost no, almost three months since we recorded. We recorded our last episode of season one, the last week of October, and then we've had our little winter break, what have you. And um, Nick and I have actually been up to a lot of stuff during this um, time, a lot of exciting stuff that we'll be sharing with you later on. Um, But if this is your first time joining us, we just want to do a brief little introduction. Um, For those of you who don't know us, Nick and I have known each other for about a decade now. We work together for seven years um, in the ministry world, and now we're both technically out of ministry world, but in the nonprofit space now. And um, a lot has changed and shifted over the time that we've known each other. Um, I think in the last decade, both of us can say we have grown a lot, a lot, a lot. Tremendously. And um, a lot of things have moved and evolved and We really like discussing and having conversation, and so that's kind of where this podcast came from. Um, Nick, you got anything else to say? I could give you a whole um, biography moment, but, you know. Yeah, we got plenty of other things to talk about. (laughs) We're both working for nonprofits right now, but, you know, I'm still attached to ministry. But I'm excited because in season two, we're going to do a couple things differently. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, today we're going to, we're, it's the beginning of the year. We're going to hit the ground running, talking about some things that are important about time management, some, making some changes in our life and all that. But uh, as you and I have talked, I think we got some controversial stuff coming up that you and I will talk about that's going to be a little more pointed in season two than it was in season one. So I'm excited about that. But the same old Nick and Emily, but a new version, 2.0. Yeah. We're the same but different, baby. That's how That's we roll. It. The um, same but different. Yes. So we actually got a lot of feedback last season. And again, thank you to those of you who support us, who have supported us. Um, I also want to shout out to everybody in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm actually about to head to Nashville this weekend. But Nashville is our number two most listened to city. Did you wow. know that? I mean, all I my people... Not. A lot of my people's in Tennessee, but I was like, oh my gosh, come on Nashville. So shout out Nashville real quick. But yeah, we were just blown away by the support and the love that we received, um, especially because we were talking about a lot of vulnerable things. And that will definitely be something we continue to dive into is being really vulnerable and having honest conversation. Um, And yeah, we're definitely ready for season two. There was some feedback we got, some questions that got asked that we were like, ooh, we're not the experts on this. We need to bring some people in. So yes, you're going to be hearing from guests this season, and we're so excited. We've got some incredible people lined up um, that I know you guys are going to enjoy. So kind of bouncing off what Nick was saying, it's the new year. There's a, a song and dance that gets played every year about what's your new year's resolution? What's going on? Um, and I just want to start off by saying You don't have to decide to change your life or to get better or whatever at the beginning of the year. It can happen at any time. And I know for me, we were having a conversation recently and the times where I've made really drastic life decisions or improvements, or I've picked up a life improving habit has actually never been at the beginning of the year. It's always been usually like smack dab in the middle of the year. Um, And so We're going to talk today about what are some things that you can do when you're ready to make a change in your life, whether it's small or super significant. Yeah. And to respond to what you just said, I think that you change either comes one intentionally or circumstantially. Mm -hmm. Something happens, a relationship, a job, something happens where we have to reinvent ourselves. But I think we can be intentional and I don't care if it's at the beginning of the year, the end of the first quarter or whenever you do it. Mm -hmm. I do think that there's too many people not making intentional change. And therefore, when change does come, it happens because of a life event. And instead of just dealing with the one life event, there's probably five other things that need to be updated as well. That's a there's a reason why software needs to be updated from time to time. So does our life. Yes, absolutely. Um, So we're just going to dive right in. I've... uh taken some notes of my own. I know, Nick, you've got a few things, so I'm going to throw it to you first, 
and we'll see where this goes. Let's process it. Sounds good. Well, first of all, I think that um, when we're talking about growth and change, I, I think the question that, that was asked of us is how do we make time and space to create mm-hmm. change in our life? And I would, whenever someone says, how do you have the time? I always balk because we all had the same amount of time. And if we're investing the same amount of time in the stuff we're already doing, we don't have enough time to invest in something new. And that's why I do like New Year's resolutions. I like taking the time to say, you know, what's what I want this next season of my life to look like. So real quick, about a decade or so ago, I was sitting in a small group of people with Bill Hybels, a well-known pastor. And he said, he made this statement, and he says, I believe that we should abandon annually measure monthly, we should withdraw weekly, and we should deposit daily. And what he was saying was, at least once a year, we should audit our lives and see what are the things we need to abandon. If I'm going to start something new, writing a book, uh, taking some classes on something, I got to create space for that to happen. What are the things that are in my life in 2022 that do not get to come into 2023? That could be relationships, It could be a job. It could be some other responsibilities that I'm doing. But something has to be cut. Usually something new does not begin until we intentionally cut something. And so he was saying, hey, you need to abandon on an annual basis, cut out the things that are not working, build in some beautiful vacation time, and create some space for something new. And then every month measure and see whether or not your new decisions are creating the change you had hoped they would. Because if you're doing something new, you probably don't know for sure what's going to work, what's not going to work. And so in his model, he would just say every month, sit down and measure whether or not those things are working. I'm going to finish with this one little quote, Emily, you've heard me say a hundred times. And it is that you cannot multiply what you will not manage and you cannot manage what you will not measure. Mm -hmm. So all growth begins by measuring where we are and where we want to go. And I thought that that was some good insight as to how to create and craft a plan. In the absence of intentional change, we're left with circumstantial change. And unfortunately, that some of those changes happen against our will. They're not on our schedule. They come at the worst time. And we usually are trying to survive the situation and not mm-hmm. optimize the change in our life from the circumstance. So any, any thoughts on anything that I just said? Yeah. The first thing that stuck out to me was really doing an inventory of where is my time and energy going and what is draining me and then what is like necessary things. So like necessary things is probably picking up your kids from school You know, uh, going to your office when your office has office hours that are mandatory, like things that you know, okay, here's where I'm at. And then here's this extra space. And I know depending on the season of life, extra space looks different for everybody. But taking the inventory to see like, where is the extra crap? (laughs) Like, where am I? I know for me, like, one thing I'm so guilty of is if I've had a long day that's just like taken a lot out of me. I will do what us millennials call, I will doom scroll. And that means I'm just scrolling on Instagram. I'm just scrolling TikTok. I'm just, you know, like la la la, letting my brain go when I could be doing something to actually probably nourish and self-soothe or recharge my battery in another way. So for those of us listening, it would be really interesting if we would be honest with ourselves for one week maybe even one day, you might get enough data to figure out like, whoa, this is where I am just like throwing away time. Um, And I think it would be interesting to sit down and kind of chart out what are those out, what are those things I'm doing that are taking away time and they're actually not benefiting me? Um, Mm -hmm. Where can I cut out some unhealthy habits or some things that are not lifing me Then I can implement new things that are going to be an improvement? Um, And I think that's a really hard self-awareness thing. But that was the first thing on my list was you got to be self-aware. What am I trying to change and what's got to go and what needs to come in? Yeah. And I would piggyback two things off that. One, you think about people who set new health goals at the beginning of the year. One of the things that 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 costs is time to go to the gym or Mm -hmm. 
time on Sunday evening to meal prep for the whole week, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that one decision is you're going to have to find some time somewhere. Well, this last two years, I've been driving to work every day, 45 minutes each way, um, every day. And so I started listening to podcasts. I started saying, what are the things I want to learn about? Well, let's use the drive time. Well, usually I would listen to sports radio or usually I would use that time to make phone calls. And so where am I going to do that? What I think is, I think that most people don't have a problem with optimization. I think they have a problem with eliminating and mm. saying, you know what? I don't like going to my in-laws for dinner once a month. Then do it once every other month. Free up one month. Uh, or, or figure out a way to say, just because I've always cut the grass or I've always paid the bills or I've always done this, maybe that's a responsibility somebody else in my world would gladly step up and take mm -hmm. if I would do something for them. So I think it's doable. I just don't think we're intentional enough. And that's why I think the first of the year is so important is because most people are talking about what's the new version of you going to look like this year? And mm -hmm. we've got to be intentional about it. Yeah. And when we say cut out things, it can also be environments and people. Like, yeah. I feel like that is probably the number one factor is who are you surrounded around? Who is who is whispering or, you know, whatever it is in your ear and getting your attention and influencing you? And that can be anything that we consume or give our time to, whether that is um, a social media thing or that's an actual person in our lives. Um, I've even had coworkers that every time I was around them, they were so negative and I just stopped giving them so much time. You know, like it's really easy to get bogged down with your environment and have that be a roadblock for you. And so I would say also, who are, what are these negative things that we're also just consuming um, that are bringing us down and keeping us from taking the necessary steps? Yeah. And, and I'll, and I'll look at the flip side of that. Um, I was with somebody that I love dearly recently and they made this comment and they said, no one ever teaches you when it's time to break up with your mentor. Oh, when, when have you outgrown your mentor and you need to break up with them and say, thank you. You've helped me. It's time to move on. And you intentionally add new mentors mm. in your life. And, and I want to, and I remember one time I was with a bunch of pastors and it was at a Willow Creek thing. And somebody said, I'm just tired. I'm just burnt out. I'm just whatever. And this dude, he's the pastoral care guy for the staff. And he says, well, I can tell you what the problem is. And we're all like, okay, tell us. And he says, you're not spending enough time with people. And we're like, are you crazy? I am done with people. I don't want to spend. He says, no, you're not spending enough time with the right people. He yeah. says, you're spending time with all the people that drain you, that consume you, that need something from you. Who are you spending time with that when you leave the room with them, your energy is mm -hmm. through the roof because you learned something, you were inspired you're going to be creative. And, and as much as we probably need to get rid of some Debbie Downers in our life, we also need to look for some people that really inspire us. You and I have had a couple of conversations with people recently that when we walked away, we had ideas, we had a plan, we were going to work on some stuff. And I think we should be more intentional about the people we add in our life as much mm -hmm. as we do the people that we ask to exit our life. You don't even have to ask them to exit. You just stop calling them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Or you just limit like conversational stuff where like Absolutely. it's just not a dialogue anymore and that's okay. Um, when you were talking about, you know, like when you have these really powerful uh, meetings or interactions with people, it's so funny. I feel like as we get older, it's really awkward to make friends or have these conversations where we're vulnerable and honest with asking for what we want or we need. I think it is it is so beautiful when you can meet someone and be like, thank you so much. This was so empowering. Can we meet once a month? Can we do this? Like what I'm getting from you is beneficial. First of all, that's so honoring to them, but also ask for what you need or want. Um, I feel like adults make it feel really awkward sometimes. Like it's, it is awkward, but especially if this is applying not just to a mentor, but even to a friend, like looking at someone and being like, I want to be friends with you. Like, I feel like this is beneficial. I'm learning something. Um, it's mutually beneficial, whatever, but ask for what you want. And 
of course, people have the right if they don't have the margin or the space or there is not, maybe you're connecting with them and they're not connecting with you. Okay. But you need to make the ask. Like if there is something or someone that's going to get you to the next level in your life, you have to be brave enough to make the ask. And I think a lot of that comes from being insecure in ourselves that we're not willing to put ourselves out there. Um, because there is always the fear of rejection. Um, but we have to get over that because you don't know how powerful that one conversation and that connection could be for you. Um, so if anybody's listening right now and you've met somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, this person knows things that I need to know, or they, they empower me or whatever. Don't be afraid to ask for a little bit of their time and you make it worth their while you show up on time. You come prepared. If they've asked you to do something like you put in the work and the effort, and that will be a beautiful mentorship relationship. Yeah, and then Emily, you're going to have to prepare yourself when this comes out for the five people that call you and want time with you once a month, when who you can say yes to, who you cannot say yes to, and instead of once a month, it could be once a quarter, all those mm-hmm. kind of things. But I have two people in 2022 that emerged in my life that are sages, that are wise people who have been around the block. And just after one conversation with them, I recognized that the voice of the Lord is in their mouth for me. They don't even have to know it. They just start saying things in its language that I'm comfortable with, that I use. And I'm like, this person has something. So how do I make it worth their while? Uh, Like you said, I don't waste their time. Mm -hmm. I pay for their lunch. I I pay for their coffee. I tell them what I did with the vice they gave me. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what else to do. I tell them who they are. I look them in the face and say, you are a rare gift for me. Mm -hmm. You're very valuable. And I want this to work. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to learn. And um, and if for whatever reason, the Lord has added a couple of those people to my world this year. And, and so I think that we have to be intentional about that. And what I try to say to them is, listen, I don't want you to do any work. Just be you. Mm-hmm. Let me ask questions. Let me, let me just glean. It's my job to figure out why you're so valuable to my mm-hmm. world I don't want you to have to put any extra effort or energy in it. And it's been beautiful to watch and see how that's played out. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So yeah, I definitely think a big chunk of this is seeing who or what to cut out, but then also what do I, or what am I going to add? Whether that is a relationship or some kind of habit, whatever it may be, what can I add? What can I subtract? Um, And I think too, not moving too far from where we're at with this conversation, but also sharing with your close knit group, what those goals and dreams are that you're making changes towards. Um, you need people who are going to hype you up, people who are going to cheer you on people that when you're tired or you're off track, they're like, Hey, I believe in you. I'm cheering for you. And that's a whole, I mean, that's the mentorship piece is one thing, but then like to have your people is a whole nother Um, I feel like takes it to a whole nother stratosphere when you can have people on your team who believe in you and who aren't going to be the naysayers who are not the Debbie Downers, but people who are going to say, oh my gosh, you can go the distance. And Emily, you'll you'll understand what I'm getting ready to say. As a pastor, some new person will join our church. We'll just be getting to know them. We'll think they're very, you know, interesting or whatever. And then they'll feel the need to tell us their past and tell us how awful their life was or all the stuff they've worked through or whatever. And I'm like, I don't care. I am in your life in this season to cheer you on for who you're becoming, not your past. Okay, that I don't care about the last 20 years. I care about who you're becoming today. And I feel like if I sat down with someone and I started sharing some goals and said this way, this year I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And this year, I'm going to do my personal best on bench press. And this year, I'm going to finish that book I've always desired to do. And if they start making fun of that, if they start just, you know, dismissing that, I will go silent and mm-hmm. their voice will be removed from my life. They're, they're not yeah. part of my future. They, I, they, don't, they are auditioning for me to share my dream with them. Mm -hmm. They're auditioning to see if they get to be a part of it or not. And as soon as they open their mouth and start talking, if they're like, wow, that's exciting. I can't wait to see it. I'm going to buy a copy. How can I help? Okay. You get to stay. But, but if it's the other direction and they just start being critical or whatever, 
then I have to move the other direction. That's the audition of whether they get to stay part of this dream or not. And watch out for those backhanded compliments. I used to work with somebody who was like the queen of a backhanded compliment. And I was like, did you just diss me? But like, you didn't, but you did. And like, that is worse than anything. So watch out for those two, because there are people who will be jealous that you're actually making an improvement or they're insecure or whatever it is that they're not making the change. And sometimes when we hold a mirror up, oh boy, does that strike a nerve in somebody. So watch out for those little like underlying things or like backhanded compliments because those are people who are pretending and you need to be able to recognize that. And like you said, turn that dial down. Mm-hmm. Turn that so, dial down. So I was in a room recently where this guy said my goal for 2023 is to bring home, have net income of a million dollars. That's my goal for this year. Same. And <laughs> well, I, that's right. It, something <laughs> like that will make you vote. So so I'm like, hmm, how do I get closer to this dude? I don't want his million. I just no. want to be around people like this. Right. People who are like, hey, yeah, by the way, this year I intend to bring home a million dollars. And and I'm sitting here draw, when I, when a big gaudy goal like that, I draw in and like, Cool. Well, what else? Really? Well, why are you doing that? What inspires you? I want to be around this guy because he, I guarantee he's going to do it. He's going to knock it out of the park and he's going to do it. And I listen to people. And when I talk to people, I'm like, ah, I don't really have any goals. Or, I, 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 it doesn't fit my style of, of living right now. I am pursuing all that I have. I just read a quote this morning that said, you're never too old. You're never too old to do the thing that's on your heart right now to do. In fact, you're better qualified probably today than you've ever been before. Mm-hmm. And so when I've got that, those I'm out to pasture, I'm too old, I don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. And so when we talk about okay, growth and change, it's intentional. You have to think through, where do I want to be? Who am I called to be? And I guarantee you there's some people and there's some habits that have to change to get you there. For sure. And I think another thing too is to understand that there are baby steps. There are tiny steps that we take, small habits that really are what makes and breaks us. It's not these like giant leaps most of the time. And so giving yourself grace. And um, one thing that I did um, a couple of years ago when I was on my health and wellness journey is I broke it up into really small wins. So it wasn't like, I lost that 50 pounds. No, it was, I lost that five pounds and that other five pounds. And like, I would reward myself. Um, It was like, okay, once I lose like 15 pounds, I'm going to get these new leggings that I want really bad. And they're like nicer. They're a little bit more expensive. So that's my next thing. And then, um, so that is also another thing that you can do is understand what reward system works for you. Cause I totally believe in rewarding myself. Um, like when I do good, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pat myself on the back, um, because I'm the one doing the work. And so that was something that I really found just to be a great motivator. And also I seemed connected with myself because it was, again, I was working for me. So I got to reward me and who knows me better than me and what I want and would find to be a good reward for what I've done. And so um, taking those small little goal or taking the big goal and then breaking it down um, to create that change is powerful. All right. So you reward yourself. Let me speak to the brothers out there. Husbands, do you want to be a good husband? When your wife says, I'm going to lose 25 pounds this year, you go up to her and say, I'll tell you what, baby, after five pounds, I'm going to buy you those leggings you've been wanting. After 15 pounds, I'm going to buy you some Fly Londons or a new pair of boots. At 25 pounds, I take you away on a long weekend on a trip somewhere. All a brother has to do is set benchmarks with rewards to keep her motivated and also to show his support. That's a good move as a husband. Y'all can have that one for free. There you go. And that can be with anything too. Like, yes, health and wellness is a priority, but like you, like you've been writing a book. And so if somebody else wants to write a book for every five chapters you write, um, or whatever it may be, like 
reward yourself with something um, because life is all about consequences, whether they're negative or positive. And so let's go ahead and give ourselves a positive consequence um, where it's like, dang, okay, I got to really um, see the, the benefit and reap a little bit from just doing what I said I was going to do. And, and Emily, have you ever read the book, The Slight Edge? I have. You gave me that book probably almost 10 years ago. <laughs> yep. So The Slight Edge is this powerful book, and it's got one powerful concept. Success and failure both have something in common. It's the small little things we do over and over again. It's choosing the salad over the cheeseburger that's on the menu. It's getting up and going for 30 minutes on the treadmill versus not. It's easy to do a salad. It's easy to do a salad. But if you do it over and over and over and over again, you're going to lose that 25 pounds. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to get on the treadmill, but it's easy not to get on the treadmill. And you're like, ah, it's just, it's just one day. I, I'll miss today. It's consistently working your plan. And, and that takes people... That's why I like classes at the gym. I hate working out by myself. I never pushed myself as hard as I could without, you know, having a trainer that's screaming at me and telling me what I need to do. So I'm just, I've, I know myself. If I want to be serious, I've got to find a class and I've got to probably pay somebody to scream at me. But I'm in better shape that way. And so the slight edge is just do the things you know you have to do and do them over and over again. That's what you did on your fitness thing mm -hmm. is that, what was it called? 75 hard? That's it. Yeah. 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 75 you, hard. Yeah. You, did, you made some hard decisions. Mm -hmm. they, they, weren't, they weren't difficult. You just had to do them over and over and over and over again, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it was it's incredible because a lot of those things have stuck with me even two years later. Um, and they've been powerful. And so again, when we implement those habits, if they're beneficial, hopefully they'll continue to stick with us. And it's not such a sacrifice. It just yeah. becomes part of our lives and something that we are like non-negotiables with. Um, I mean, yeah. one, one thing for sure is like water for me. I got, I got to drink my water now. Do I, I do not drink a gallon every day, but I drink a minimum of 80 ounces because I feel better for it. My body thanks me for it. And so um, if we can find those habits, and yes, seasons of life change all the time. We're going to have to pivot. We're going to have to adjust. Um, you know, even when we go on vacations or whatever, like there's things that we do to grow and change and evolve. But if you can find those things for that season of life that you carry with you, it just brings also a sense of stability that I think is very important because when we're making big changes, we also need like a safe landing spot too. Mm -hmm. um, and we've kind of, we actually kind of echoed this on one episode last season where when we do have a safety net, it's easier for us to take the bigger jump, to make the change. And so for some of us, that may be people in our lives, but for others, it may be your consistency with yourself, like things that you've made and you've made a foundation for that allows you then to make the bigger jump and the bigger change. So I would also say, what are those foundational things in my life that keep me anchored that now allow me to do something outside of the box? And for some like people, that. that may even be like financial things, like if you know... I want to start a new business and I need to have X amount of dollars saved up, but it would feel really good if I had this much and I had a little cushion, then go do that. Go start there. Don't, if you're not financially ready to jump off the ledge and start a new business, then don't go do that. Maybe this year is the year that you build some financial stuff and build relationships with people and learn, and then you're ready to go make the big change. But everything builds on the other thing, like everything is moving up and up and up. Um, and I think that's super powerful for us to know, like there are a lot of beautiful steps in the process and we don't want to skip over those. So let's get those foundational things done really well so that we are more brave and we have that safety that allows us to dream sometimes. And yes, there's risk. Don't, I mean, I'm not excluding just being like, I'm going to take a risk. And Hey, most, a lot of people have great benefit with just like taking the big jump. But for other people, it may be really beneficial for you to have a baseline, have a little mm -hmm. bit of a surrounding first before you do that. Yeah. 
So our buddy Sterling Gardner, he posted on social media this week. <clears throat> he says there's a lot of people that want more money. They they want to their ship to come in. They want to put that product, that book, that song, that something out there. And he said, but are you doing the necessary things now to make room for that money? Mm-hmm. Are you on a budget? Are you paying off debt? Are you cleaning up some stuff? Just like having a baby. If you're having a baby, you go ahead and set aside a room in the house and you get a crib and you paint it pink or blue or whatever. And it was really, I caught my attention. I mean, I know this principle in general, mm-hmm. but the way this throwing said it is like, if I really think that this is going to be, if that guy who's planning a, um, a million dollars in, in net gain this year, I guarantee you he is doing some things to get some things lined up so that when it comes in, he keeps it. And I think for all of us, Part of the preparing for change and growth is cleaning up some stuff so that when it does land, it has a place to live in our life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to say, too, because there's all kinds of people that listen to this podcast, you do have the ability to change and to grow and to evolve. And Mm -hmm. you have to believe in you. Because there's going to be plenty of people who don't believe in you or plenty of people who will go radio silent whenever you decide that you're going to make a change. They're going to mock you, make fun of you, even say you can't do it. You have to believe in yourself enough. And that takes hard work. It is hard sometimes for you to silence the voices of insecurity. It is hard for you to get up when you're exhausted, but you can do hard things. And I'm a huge Glennon and Doyle fan, and I love her. Her whole podcast is We Can Do Hard Things. But that really is the thing that you need to remind yourself of. You are capable. You really, really are. That's it. There's a quote, actually, that you sent me, Nick, years ago, and I wish I could just rattle it right off. Actually, I might find it. And it was basically saying, we are actually infinitely more capable than we ever give ourselves credit for. Do you know what I'm talking about? I remember that. I I know which quote you're talking about, but I can't spat it off off the top of my head. But it's about brilliance and about shining your light, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You find it, and I'll talk for a second. Yeah, go for it. How about... (laughs) Yeah. Well, no, but I think that I think that that's why you need companions for the for the journey Mm -hmm. is for when you question yourself, who hasn't struggled with imposter syndrome and said, who? who, I mean, there are so many singers out there. What makes you better? Are you Mm -hmm. writing a book about what? There's a thousand books like that. What makes you more qualified than the next guy about that book? And there's all these negative voices, including the ones in our own head that try to talk us out of our brilliance. And so it's nice to have a couple of people. And and you know what it could be? It could be simply as as simple as this. Find two girlfriends and say, can we have lunch once a month where we get together and the three of us talk about how we're doing with our goals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you would naturally encourage one another. And you know you'd have an accounting coming up. You'd probably like, I better get out four workouts in right quick before we go to this lunch because they're going to ask me about it. But I think that's, that's why we were never called to do this journey by ourselves. Yes, I found the quote. I had, I knew Good. I had it Go. saved pretty easily. Um, so this is from Marianne Williamson. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others, other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Love it. Wow. Wow. And I just, it's such a beautiful reminder that, again, it's not our inadequacies. It's that whenever you dig deep inside of yourself and you do the hard thing, you you unlock something where you're like, I didn't know I was capable of that. And it's almost scary because everything that tells us, especially as a woman in society, like everything, there's so many things against us, like body image stuff. I could go on and on about like, 
what we are being fed, like the male gaze, just everything that we are just thrown and plummeted to. Is that right? Um, it just, it makes us question everything we are. And then when you unlock that you are powerful and capable, it's almost like you're like scared. It's like, oh my gosh, I can do this. I'm empowered to do this. I was created to do something extravagant and magnificent. Um, and it's, it's incredible, but it's also the scary thing because everything else is telling you to shrink back or you're not being humble or, you know, you need to be more meek and mild. Um, and it's like, no, that's not actually anything in my DNA that tells me to do that. Um, so yeah, you are capable. You are so capable to do the crazy thing and to make the change and to go the distance. Totally agree. It, it would be so unnatural for you to try to tone it down. It would be so unnatural for you to try to be meek and mild and quiet you don't blend well at all. You walk into a room, you you love the big spotlight, you love the big stage, your personality needs space, it needs it needs room for it to exhibit itself. You're not you're not arrogant, you're not mean, but you are a bright, big, beautiful voice and person and you need space for that. And so in your situation, you don't have any options. If you're going to be who you're supposed to be, you need people around you that see that and cheer that on. And you have to be able to believe in that enough to make the decisions you have to make. For you and I, those we can tell pretty quickly if somebody deserves to be in our life or needs to be in our life because we understand where we're going. There's a lot of people don't know where they're going. They don't know how they're uniquely different from somebody else. They haven't had these experiences or opportunities. What do you say to somebody who is 25 to 30, who is far enough out of their parents' house, but they are still working through who they are, how, would, how do they go about finding uh, some of their uniqueness? How do they go about tapping into some of that and finding the confidence to make a plan to go for it? Got any advice for somebody like that, Em? I know I'm putting you on the oh, spot. Yes. No, I would love to talk on this. So first of all, thank you so much. In case y'all don't know, uh, Nick is one of my hype men in my life. So Nick, thank you. You're too kind. And my life's mission is for me to let everybody else shine as well, to teach people that they can be as bright and shiny and over the top as I am, <laughs> if they so want to be. Um, I would love to, if I, I mean, even just thinking about my own self at like age 25, start really paying attention to what you like and don't like. What are things that whenever you encounter them or you're around them, like sparks something, like something resonates with you? Pay close attention to energy. Um, that is one thing I'm I'm really thankful for is the gift of discernment and energy and like knowing and feeling things out. Um, because that helps me know where I should go. Like that's kind of my compass is, and I know a lot of people are not feelers. Like I have some friends who are like very logical and they're just like, uh, when you say like you had a bad feeling, I don't get that. And that's okay. But you, but you can know what you like and don't like. Sure. And I think for a lot of, uh, people, especially in your mid to late twenties. And when this podcast airs, I'll have already had a birthday. And I'm 32 now. Um, and uh, I, I feel like such an old lady being like, in your late 20s. Um, but mid to late 20s, I wish I would have taken more inventory of what like set me ablaze. What is something that like, um, whether it was like a social justice issue, whether it was the music I was listening to, um, the people I was around, the places I went, I wish I would have really taken stock of those things and then been brave enough to lean fully in. Hmm. Um, now, there was a lot of outside factors on why I couldn't lean into certain things just because of what was going on in my life at the time, um, whether it was because I was sick or et cetera, et cetera. Um, but paying attention to those things and just leaning in and diving deeper is a game changer. Because it's very important that you do know, I don't like this, or I feel uncomfortable in this environment or whatever, or 
oh my gosh, that poetry lights me up. Every time I hear this poet, like they get me, I resonate with that. And I think finding your likes and dislikes and then tailoring those things into what's my life going to be like? What do I truly enjoy doing? And then turning that into a career is really the ultimate thing, right? I mean, if we can make money from the things that we truly love and you can avoid the things you hate, well, then that's great. Um, But I really wish I would have paid more attention because I think I would have pivoted a lot faster career-wise and who I was around um, because I would have really known what I like, what I don't like, what I'm going to put up with, what I would absolutely not tolerate, and then just really dove after the big and exciting things that really resonated with me. So I know we don't have enough time to fully unpack this, but you and I both have a mutual friend who's wrestling with the shoulds Mm -hmm. that she should do this. She should do that. You know, the expectation of the parents or friends or whatever. And I think in that age bracket, the 25 to 30, really paying attention to what you want Mm -hmm. what you'd like the rest of your life to look like. And then what are the shoulds that immediately jump up and said, you can't do that. You've got to do this and you've got to do that. And where are they coming from? Because I really do think one of the greatest opponents, adversaries to the wants and dreams of our life is the expectations we've taken on by ourselves or family or or, Mm -hmm. our religious thoughts. And those expectations kill that dream before it's even had a chance to breathe. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh yeah. It's and it's terrifying to step out and take that next step that will require you to really change. Like it is that is scary when you can say this is my why and this is what I want. And it's so funny how people try to demonize our <laughs> our wants or dreams or aspirations. Um and I would just Really trust yourself. Trust yourself. If you love it and it's in your heart and it's consuming your day-to-day thoughts and you're like, man, I got to move to Paris. <laughs> like you can't get Paris out of your mind. Um, then like really look into that. Why is it, What what is there for me? Why is my heart drawn to that? Um, there's going to be plenty of, of negativity in the world. So let's lean into those positive voices. Let's lean into those things that are going to really make our lives beautiful. Because we were, we were created for delight. We were created for goodness. And so why do we keep deferring that? Love it. Well said. Great job. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I could keep on about this topic, but let's put a pin in it for today. And we would love to hear from you guys. What are some things that or steps that you do when you are ready for a change in your life, whether that is a career change, a relationship change, a health and wellness change, any kind of change? We want to hear about what are things that really help you get to the next place in your life. Um, I love hearing different stories about different things that people have had to walk through and it's powerful when we share our stories. So please, please, please share those with us. Nick, anything else for this day? Nope. Just surround yourself with the right people. You'll get your energy and you'll get confirmation on your dreams. And I think that that's add the right people and 2023 can be the best year of our Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for listening today. Do not forget to follow us on our Instagram, our Facebook, like, and subscribe. Um, We want to interact with you. So please feel free to uh, email the podcast. Let's process that podcast at gmail.com. Real quick, I want to shout out. Thank you to our producer, Adrian Bosch, to this incredible music you're listening to right now, created by Caleb Honerkamp. And when you see our faces all over social media with some premium photography that is before the foundations photography aka allison frost we look forward to chatting with you guys and have a great day bye-bye